Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's really exciting to see so many people here. Uh, the title <coughs> of my talk is JavaScript, why can't we all get along? Just get along. Uh, and if you've seen the film, um, Mars Attacks, he makes a, you know, a heartwarming speech, and then he gets his out. And that's kind of somehow what JavaScript can be like developing. You, know, kind of, you do your best, and you get zapped. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Rob Claiborne. Uh, I was a creator of Fabric, which is a <laughs> thank you, Luke, <laughs> uh, which is like a very long-established form and CCK builder. Um, last, I'm still part of the Jed development team, and I was responsible for developing quite, developing quite a bit of the Jed. Um, partial to where dandelion daffodils, um, as. As we all should be. Uh, <laughs> Ask me <them> later. <laughs> you know, it's a mystery. Um, so, what we're going to talk about basically a brief history of JavaScript, very, very quickly. We're going to brush over it. Uh, a little bit of Joomla and JavaScript, how that's evolved slightly over, over the years. Um, no, asking questions about what we might be missing in, jo in Joomla and JavaScript at the moment. And then I'm going to propose a possible solution to some of the problems, not all of them. Um, so, what I've done is I've uh, injected Joomla releases into kind of a timeline of some of the stuff I think is important about JavaScript. There's obviously loads of stuff that's missing from there. You know, the slides are that big, I had that many points. So, 1995 was released by Netscape. Uh, the guy did it in like 10 days or something, it's just mind blowing. Um, and then, the, those of us old enough to remember, the HTML was the thing. Uh, in 1997, when I graduated, that was, you know, that was hot. Um, I think what's kind of the important point is that in 2004, Gmail was deployed using Ajax. That was before it was a standard. I think mean, it's not written there, but 2005 was Google Maps. Uh, and that's when the first version of Joomla was released. So we've got to put in context that when Joomla was released, JavaScript was really kind of, uh, you know, the ugly duckling. And it was only very technical people that were doing anything with it. Uh, certainly, you know, from a PHP point of view, it was difficult for developers to, you know, get into and to understand. It's, you know, it's kind of on the side. Uh, so, 2006, uh, jQuery was released, and um, HTTP requests uh, was was the first uh, draft that was released. And then moving on a couple of years later, Joomla 1.5, and then, uh, which is kind of crazy, is like ES5 was released afterwards. And like you know, that's kind of what we kind of all think of as JavaScript nowadays is uh, ECMAScript five, and that was released after June one point five. Um, and then quite rapidly was Angular JS, which quite a few people have talked about uh, during the last couple of days. Um, and that does two-way bindings, so you change something in your form and your model changes, and that's quite a radical way of thinking about stuff. We put data first beforehand. We're all you know fiddling with the DOM and you know having to like create selectors and they inverse it and they put data first, which is a really important um, point. Um, and then, you know, Joomla 2.5 and 3 came out and then React came out, which is really important as well, I, fi I find, uh, because it simplified the whole view point of JavaScript. Um, Angular is a bit clunky, or Angular 1 is a bit difficult to manage. And React is very simple and it, um, it uh, facilitates creating uh, interesting JavaScript applications. And then, uh, very recently, we have Flux, uh, which is developed, well, not developed, because it's not really a, you know, a thing. It's a concept, um, which is one-way data flow through, uh, through your application. So, whereas with Angular, we had this kind of two-way binding, where you click something, it would change something, that change would affect something else, da, 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 and you'd have this entire you know, flow of stuff going through. Flux is a, um, it's a system where you say an action, causes something to change and then that flows down and that will trigger something else so you have this loop of, of information. And then um, uh, what tends to be used these days is an implementation of Flux which is called uh, Redux, um, which is now part of um, the Twitter um, group of JavaScript applications. And we've had an ES6 which has been released as well. And that's um, the, what was it, 10 years since the last, yeah, 10 years, uh, six years, so, since ES5. Um, so let's just talk about Joomla and JavaScript. <coughs> See, when I started, there was no cons consensus about how you should do JavaScript in Joomla. 
and more for me, I chose Prototype for my code, um, which was great. It was a really nice library. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> when Juma came along, <laughs> they said, everyone use more tools. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to recode all my stuff. So I did it, um, and that was great. And then, then came Juma 3, everybody use jQuery. I'm like, oh, God. Okay, I haven't done it. <laughs> We're still using Moon Tools because uh, I'll, I'll explain why later on. Um, Bootstrap 2 and Juma 4 Plus, they will still be using jQuery, I'm sure, and some version of Bootstrap. Um, so you can only constat that the only thing in constant in life is change. So it's how you manage that is quite important. Um, so, <laughs> okay, I, I scared myself. Uh, what does a JavaScript heavy project look like anyway? Um, Fabric, it's horrific. We have 26.5% of our code is JavaScript, which is really large for a PHP <coughs> project. Um, there's 612 files of JavaScript. We have like, I don't know, 60, 70 plugins. Each one has a, their own JavaScript file. We have, that's including libraries as well, and things we, we use, so it's not necessarily stuff we've just coded. And <laughs> there's 372,000 lines of JavaScript code. That's, you know, so you do that every year. Yeah, I change that every year. You know? yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's, that's with minify code, and I couldn't disentangle everything. But there's, you know, there's, it's a big project, and so managing that is quite complicated. And if I was starting again, I probably wouldn't start because <laughs> my brain hurts. Ow! So there's kind of a couple of Monty Python um, images in here for fun. So. Uh, as we're quite JavaScript heavy and we do support on a product, we have the inevitable support questions. Uh, and often what we find is components loading still their own version of jQuery. Uh, so you have different versions of jQuery onto which one or the other will have the plugins attached to it. So you will find that you know one plugin won't work somewhere else. Um, people won't. You know, this is kind of stuff that has happened. This is jQuery not in no conflict mode. That's kind of less important these days. Um, if you do an Ajax call, it can potentially load a new version of jQuery, which sounds great, until that's destroyed all your plugins you previously loaded on the page. Um, and then templates do their own thing, so there's kind of, you know, UI kit, Bootstrap 3, Bootstrap 4, they'll have different layouts, and if your JavaScript is relying on a certain class or structure, um, then you can be into trouble. Um, so you're kind of left with the idea of rewriting your code to keep the latest libraries, or <coughs> as we currently are, which is still loading more tools, which isn't great either because you have this you know, extra library that doesn't really do much. Um, so how does that make me feel as a Java JavaScript developer? Run away! <laughs> it's the, <laughs> you want to get out of the room and you know hide because there's a big cow coming to hit you. Um, so something completely different. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> What might be missing? So, if we were to start, if I was to start Fabric again, this is how I'd look at it. Um, I'd want dependency management. I want to make sure that when I am calling one file, another file will be loaded and it'll be the right file. Um, I'd want a declarative data first approach. I wouldn't want to be messing with the DOM. You know, the DOM, that's for the template people, for the end user, you know, the developer the designer, I just want to have something that controls my data, that describes my application state. Um, I'd like it to be able to cost communicate. If I've got a module here and a component there, I'd want them to be able to talk, to share data, to be cross communicative I think that's one of the problems you have possibly with Joomla, is that that doesn't exist. Um, and I'd want the view layer separated from the data layer. So, as I was talking about the data first, that's the, the flip side of it, is that the view layer, that could be Angular, React, um, plain JavaScript, whatever, that should be separated completely from how your data is structured and how you're managing that. Um, so a uh, quick talk about dependency management. I mean, it's, it's a couple of, well, three main ideas at the moment. So you've got AMD, which is asynchronous module definition, which um, is what we use in Fabric at the moment. Uh, which is kind of require JS is what most people tend to use, and that says um, before starting I need this file, and it'll go away and send it out an AJAX request to load that file, so you know that that class is 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 existing in your code before you start. 
Um, common JS, which is more kind of an, comes from the Node JS side of things, and that generally requires a pre-compilation before you're running it. So you'd um, use Gulp or, or something like that to, to concatenate all your files together. Um, and then the recent spec um, is ES6 modules. And again, because it's new, you'd have to compile that from ES6 down to ES5 before running it. Um, so for that, you'd need something called Babel. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about data-first approach for JavaScript and what is a really important concept, which we don't often deal with in PHP, but in JavaScript it's quite uh, common, is something called immutable. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of what is that? Oh, and Alan Kay. The last thing you want any program to do is mess with the internal state, even if presented figuratively. Um, so you have an object, you don't want to be changing that object because then it becomes more difficult to control. So this is a mutable object, so this is kind of like, can you see that? Is that visible? Um, you have a map, and an object, and you, you assign it to map2, you change map2's b value to 2, and you assert that the map2 equals map1, and it's true. They're the same, they're the same object, they're just referenced together. If you create a new copy, a uh, new reference, sorry, uh, map3, and you change map3 to b, uh, b to 50, map1 will still equal map3. So you have this one object that has multiple states inside it. So immutable objects differ. Um, here I've just used the library immutable. It's not necessarily, uh, you, it's not something you have to use, but it's quite useful. Um, and we've got the same code, uh, but I'm using immutable an, imm an immutable map instead. And you notice that whilst um, it starts for B, and we set B to be two, so that stays the same. So it's still the same module, we haven't altered it. Um, so it asserts the same. And as soon as you change a value, they're not the same anymore. We've actually created a new object. So map one is an object, and map three uh, is, some, is a new object. It's a so you have a history of what's happened with your object. Um, okay, so continuing with the data first approach, and what I said was happening last year, this year, is Redux. And this is a very simple diagram explaining how that works. Uh, as I said, the view provider, that could be anything. That could be React, plain JavaScript, whatever. You're just having a user who clicks a mouse on a button, say. And that uh, dispatches an action to your to what this is basically uh, Redux here. Um, so the user triggers an action, click on button. Um, Optionally, you have some middleware that will run a bit like a, that could be used for logging or altering the, the, the action. And then what you have is uh, a series of reducers, which are pure functions, uh, which change this, which, uh, which take in your action and say, oh, Rob clicked on the button. Uh, this button has you know, an action to do. Uh, I, need to, I, need to, um, I need to modify the state and produce a new version of the state. So the reduces the pure functions, which means that what you can very easily test it. You know what goes in should come out. There's no there's no internal changing of things. And then finally, once the state has changed, the view provider will update itself. So we're not we're not um, involved in um, manipulating the DOM ourselves. So taking that idea into Joomla, um, I've put up a little project called Whisper which is a small uh, 14k plugin, uh, which implements Redux and it has four methods, so it's quite simple. So add reducer, the reducer, remember that was the function that dealt with the data. Uh, dispatch for sending out information, uh, actions. Uh, you can query the state of your application with a get state. Um, and finally, you can subscribe to changes. So you know, when the state changes, you want to be updated. So it's quite straightforward. Uh, and what we've done is I've attached it to the Joomla global object, and you can access that from anywhere. It's a system plugin, sorry, didn't mention. Um, and you can access it from anywhere in any of your components um, with the trigger function, which is like jQuery's trigger, sending an event. 
so for example, you could whisper add reducer or whisper dispatch. Um, so a little example of what we're going to do. I've got created my to-do list, the classic to-do list, and I have to ring my mother. She's really upset with me. I need to feed the cats. I've, and what I want to do is, over on the right-hand side of my module here, is I want to uh, display the total number of items. And I don't want them linked. No, I don't, don't necessarily have to have the to-dos thing there, and, and the module will then you know, not display anything, but it won't, it won't, um, it won't produce an error either. OK, so I've written a JavaScript in just plain JavaScript, no jQuery. Um, and for information, that's just a shortcut to the, the, the plugin. Um, it's like the standard jQuery dollar sign for our whisper object. So I've got my um, add to do button. I'm going to press it, you know, I'm going to click on it. It's going to create an action. So here it's called com to do add. Uh, it's first of all, it describes the component and then the action you're doing, uh, the value of what it is. And then I'm going to trigger that um, to, to the plugin. So it's basically saying, hey, I'll click this button. It just doesn't need to know anything more than that. It's just that's what the action was. And then the reducer which is the bit of code that manages our logic, our application logic. It's going to take those in and it's going to, again, I simplified it by creating a little helper there to make the code more logical, easy to read. But it's saying, you know, what action type have I got? If it's like com to do party or com to do delete, I don't care about it. I'm just interested in add. So that's switch statement there. And then I'm going to create my to do object here with the action text. And I'll just, because it's just front end, I've created an ID that's random. And then um, this is the um, bit about immutable data. Rather than saying um, the state, if that's the application state, uh, rather than saying state dot to do's equals, which will mute, mutate the original object, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new object. I'm assigning it to a blank state to a blank object, and then I'm inserting the to do into there. And then I'm returning it. Um, and to to attach the reducer to our um, to our system, I'm just doing whisper add reducer and adding the name and the reducer into the into the, into the plugin. Does that work from anywhere? Will that be a a, um, a component or a module? And then once my state is updated, finally we need to render it. And normally this would be not plain JavaScript; it would be React or Angular or something like that. But um, I'm saying once we get the state, yeah, it's going to go down to the bottom. <coughs> uh, okay, yeah. So uh, I'm creating a render function which is basically taking in the state that we've just changed and we are re rendering a list of to do's. It's very simple, it's a couple of lines of code. And then I'm saying render at the beginning, so it will uh, draw the number of to do's right when the page loads. And then I'm saying subscribe, so I'm subscribing to any changes in the store model. So as soon as the state changes, we're going to run that function there and we're going to show the number of items uh, the to do list. Okay, so that's the component. So it's adding in um, to dos. You know, you enter in the, the you know, ring mother, press enter, and it will update the view for you. And then the module, um, this is all it's doing. It's just counting the number of to dos. So it's uh, just anonymous function to load in during the whisper. Um, and then what we're doing here is we're just saying um, we have a render function, uh, which is basically getting the state. And, and counting the number to do's. In the example at the beginning, that'll be three. And we're rendering it, so on page load, it will render the number to do's. And then we're subscribing to any changes. So once the change happens, we're going to re render this part here. Uh, I'll skip over that. So I've got a little video. Let me just see that. So there I am, I'm buying my milk. <coughs> no, 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 and the, you know, comes there, and the total of changes there. 
between the two, the module and the component, without one having to know about the other, because it just subscribing to changes. Um, oh, I had a delete function as well, so I delete them, and it, and it does the same thing, same principle. Uh, yeah, and this is part of the middleware idea, is that each action, you can see it, that's logging, what's happened, so you can see what your like, entire application state very easily. Um, so there was my action, come to do add, and I can check out what the action was, ring mother, and I can also see what the state is before and afterwards. So there's the next state. There's my com to do object uh, with an array of the list of things I need to do. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> because that's what, well, I don't know, the demo code is about. 30 lines of JavaScript, it's really nothing, and it would be a lot less if I wasn't doing the DOM rendering myself. It would be, you know, so you've got a very, very little, you know, small footprint of code that's doing quite a lot of it from, uh, for you. Um, and I wish I'd done that when I first started writing Fabric, because we have this kind of horrible rendering thing where we're kind of trying to guess the DOM, and if someone doesn't have a, you know, a, a data tag in the DOM, we, we can't render it. Um, so that's much better. Uh, so what else can you do with that? Um, the example that I've given there is kind of a bit noddy, a bit easy. Uh, you can also have async actions uh, to query the database. So rather than just having a little JavaScript object that says prom to do uh, add uh, feed the cats, you can actually send it off to the database and when it comes back it will then update the, the store for you. Uh, I've also implemented uh, front-end caching for hot loading so you can uh, store the entire application data on a, in, a, in, in local storage in the index DB. And then you can just, because it's just an object, you can then hydrate your application very easily with that. Um, one of the things I haven't really haven't touched on is that the idea of Redux is each data store is separate. So com to do's would have only information about itself. Com articles would have something about articles. Uh, and if you need to merge the two together, you'd be using selectors, um, which is kind of like MySQL views. To, 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 to meld your data together. Uh, and then what, what else you could possibly have is have uh, reducers for the core components. So you'd have by stand, the plugin by standard would have like a, something for managing articles or managing users, which you could then opt into if you wanted to. So uh, just to summarize, uh, Whisper.js, it's a very small library, 14K, um, to manage one-way data flow. Uh, in the GitHub repository, there's a component and a module explaining how it works. Recommend you check it out and look because it's a bit, it's quite a lot to get through I'm, I'm looking at that. And then uh, the idea is that it's opt-in. So it's not like saying, oh, you must use this. Um, it's opt-in. If you wanted to install it, you could. And we're not um, uh, deterministic about what view rendering you want to use. If you want to use Angular or um, React or just plain JavaScript, that's up to you, so it's not, uh, it's not dependent on that. Okay, so there's a couple of uh, links. So first one's the, um, the GitHub repository for the code. The second one is uh, just the presentations, if you need it. It's in HTML. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple of links. So uh, Redux, and then the video series, which is fantastic. The guy is absolutely awesome. I don't know how he managed to do everything. Um, but if you want, think, even if you're not interested in, in necessarily the JavaScript code, the way he's written his docs, the way he's done his videos, is, it's a fantastic example of open source documentation. Really recommend it. It's just, uh, he makes things that are complex, very simple to understand. And that's my email address. Any questions? <laughs> um, have you implemented using React or, or Angular? Yes, yes, I've done both React and Angular. Uh, and <coughs> impressions, opinions, pitfalls, excitements. <laughs> <laughs> Shit uh, that you didn't expect. Oh, those, those are that. God. <laughs> um, I kind of have a leaning towards React. It's a little less 
It's more, it's, this library was designed with React in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Angular is completely possible, there's less documentation about it, so it's a little harder to, um, uh, not in general, but with Angular with Redux, it's a little less well documented. But, mm -hmm. um, but the whole concept is really important, it's the fact that you just have this flow of data and action, it goes up to the, the reducers which change the store, and then that flows down again. It's very easy to understand the flow of your application. What uh, we did with the JED, is we had like an Angular backend, and we didn't have this. Mm. And very quickly, you're kind of like coming into a situation where you, the flow of the, the flow of the application is not apparent, and therefore it's very difficult to debug. And you're kind of having not necessarily race conditions, but you, it's, it's you can't you can't say oh well here is where this will happen. You don't you know this is a nice way of um, really standardising how you how you do applications. Yes. yes? You touched with the link, so it's not about JavaScript really, but it's more, you touched on it, like Bootstrap, you mentioned Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap yeah. 4, you read the UI kit and all that, so I find it harder actually to deal inside Joomla with CSS context, if you will, mm -hmm. than actually JavaScript. So how do you sort that? Do you find a way to uh, insulate your, um, your code? If, you're doing, if you wanted to insulate the CSS, you'd use the web component. That's probably what I'd do. It depends on the on the thing. I think. Um, I've definitely I've used this with a you know with a web component where you can just, uh, just a couple of lines to inject your application into the page. Um. In view of the pain you've gone through um, with the Joomla revisions along the way and the yeah. potential for more pain to come, um, what do you think of the idea of actually extracting out the, the Bootstrap layer to just an interface vocabulary for all extension developers? that the CSS behind it changes over time. Bootstrap versions yeah. change, but you map. It's not just the CSS, it's the markup that changes as well, yeah. which is, um, uh, say if you're looking for a certain, I don't know, a navigation, yeah. um, you have like a user specific kind of list with a class name, or something doesn't exist anymore. Um, you can get around that with the you know, data, food, whatever, tags, but it still feels it's the wrong way around. You're still trying to, uh, you're still trying to uh, d describe your application functionality with markup, which mm -hmm. doesn't, make a lot of sense in the moment, I think. So what do you suggest is elegant? <laughs> um, what we've done in Fabric, which is kind of a halfway house, is that um, we're loading the templates, the layer overrides, mm -hmm. as JavaScript objects. So you can you jQuery the string, mm -hmm. and that'll turn it into a jQuery thing, and then you can then inject that in to your, into your code. And that, that works pretty well. Uh, and it's quite a nice, simple way of um, giving that kind of rendering flexibility without changing the whole the way the whole application works. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, regarding web component, and uh, I mean, I don't know if exactly fits in this presentation, but uh, have you used Polymer, or do you like it? Uh, I mean, yeah. well, since you talk about data binding and mm -hmm. this kind of thing, uh, I've not used Polymer. No. I've, uh, not in Angular. I've looked at it. I've not actually used it in actual projects. Uh, when I did the web component, it was just a standard web component. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.